Okay. Would you like to um, repeat the name of your store again? Your for hot sauces or your can? Uh, the the company name is Net is Nature. That's N E T E R S uh, N A T U E R uh, um, R E uh, dot com. Nettersnature.com. Okay. And you selling? What's the name of your hot sauces again? We got three hot sauces. It's uh, Soul Sauce. Sassy sauce and old Moorish gourmet. Okay, and you go by Marzuk or Mansa? Uh, Mansa uh, Jogu was uh, my Facebook name. I started out with that, but um, that was shortly after we took a couple trips to uh, Senegal and, um, well, uh, Dakar, Senegal, but um, in, in the temple, Moorish. Uh, Science Temple of America, I'm Marzouk Razini. Okay, Marzouk. Mm -hmm. So you and you were the owner of Nubian Knowledge. Yes. Store Nubian Knowledge. Uh, which sells books and Facebook page. Yes. And your, I'm sorry, the name of your cannery store was also uh, Net Netters Nature. Netters Nature. Okay. Yeah, nettersnature.com is the website. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Sounds like something I can try. I was looking for some hot sauce today, actually, for my canola rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quinoa. I think. There's some good sauce. Um, okay. All right. So, what I'm going to try to do was go over today uh, the connection of the Numidians or the link between the Numidians and the people of the Sudan. Because basically Numidians were just the people that were pushed southward by the Arabic, you know, conquests. And uh, some of the people were traders in the Sudan, who I have said were Sonic uh, related people or Sonic speaking people, originally Nilo Saharan speaking people. And um, I had on the Facebook page, I think, put uh, a, some information regarding modern speculation speculation over the Malo Saharan dialects. So some think that it's actually closer related to Afroasiatic than anything else, which is interesting. Because I've been saying that the, you know, the people that are called very very were originally Nilo Saharan speakers, however, originated in the same, in an earlier wave than some of the uh, Afro-Asiatic speakers, or in a different wave. I'm not even sure if it's the earliest wave, but um, they were definitely people that might have adopted Nilo Saharan dialects and have been originally uh, Afro-Asiatic speakers. So, this map shows the area of the Maghreb from Libya to the Atlantic. And it's, I think, from the last, I'm not sure what, oh, it's from, yeah, the 19th century. Um, so here we have, uh, what's called, I, can't, I guess you're not seeing my pointer, right? Not seeing my pointer. Uh, I don't okay. see your pointer, but yeah, I don't see it on there. Okay, so on the far right is the Libya uh, of the ancient world and of today, and next to the Libyan desert, where the Tubu or Tibu Garan are, is Fazan and the country of the Garamantes. Okay, Fazan is also in Libya, or what's now modern Libya. Um, so just to quickly review the, the territories extending between the Nile and uh, Atlantic, you have Numidia, uh, which was in Libya. Hold on.
in um, Tunisia extending to Mauritania. So the area of modern Tunisia, Algeria, and parts of Libya were considered ancient Numidia, as well as Sijomasa and, and um, or actually I should say medieval Numidia, because it's Leo Africanus that tells us that Sigil Massa and places that are now in present uh, Morocco were once part of Numidia. So that was the medieval period. So here we see uh, on the far on the left, Sigil Massa next to the Dara region, and on the same latitude as uh, over here, Gardea. And Wargla, the Wargla oasis of the Granada. So actually, all these places were mainly of Granada Berber stock. But let me just start so you can understand in order. I'm not just going to skip around like I usually do. Um, okay, can you see this uh, this page? Um, it says Moors of Tangiers. Uh, I can see Tangiers on this map. They said, uh, oh, you, okay, hold on. First page. Sorry, still on the map. Okay, I don't want to, mm -hmm. I want to go to, okay. Um, so first of all, we've spoken before of the Mori of Mauritania as being uh, people that Strabo said call themselves the Mori. And Mauritania included Morocco and an area of the northern part of Algeria. Um, and uh, extending into what's now called Mauritania, um, perhaps further south later on. So, but the Moors mentioned by, um, you know, in early Islamic times, especially in Tangiers, uh, were said to be, you know, just like Isidore said, people of a, you know, black in complexion, black skinned people. And here I'm going to mention again uh, what the, an Andalusian chronicle says of the eighth century after when they were fighting against Syrians. It says, when they joined with each other in the battle at the Nava River, the Egyptian horses immediately recoiled in flight as the Moors on their beautiful horses revealed their repulsive color and gnashed their white teeth. The Arab Syrian cavalry, well, I put Syrian here because the author says that they were actually Syrians, not Arabians. The Syrian cavalry launched another attack in despair, but again, recoiled instantly due to the Moors of the, the color of the Moors' skin. The horses fled in fear, resulting in the death, in their death, as well as the death of their riders. Okay, so. That was um, written in the eighth century AD and his description of the Berbers, or Mori, of Mauritania Tangentina, or the Mauritania of Tangiers, which was the area right across from Spain and Gibraltar. And of course, let me just go here back to my photos. Because I'm um, I kept putting up, uh, let's see, is it, no. no. Um, I want to make sure people understand that the Mori are still in that area of Chifchaouen, which is right next to Tangiers, or right south of Tangiers. So here are some of the Chifchaouen Berbers of today. Um, the area was known as the region of Masmuda Berbers early on. 
later on the Zenata Berbers came in, but these Masmuda have always, of course, been described as black skin, like the other Berbers. Uh, and they claim descent from, well, at least the Bergwada branch, claim descent from Simeon, which was a tribe of Israel. Um, am I showing, am I showing that? Oh, no. uh, I see still the, uh, okay, here they the are. Uh, description. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Let's see if I can quickly find other. Oh, this is not the one I'm looking for. Uh, hold on. I got off that. My newest photos, uh, let's see. Hmm. Should be here, but they're not. Uh, anyway, let me go to just to uh, the posts because that's where I have most of the photos anyway. Um, go down past the pictures of the Pharisees. Okay, so all these pictures I was I was putting up on my Facebook. were mainly, in the past few days, were mainly of the Zanata Berbers. So the Zanata were one, a major branch of the Berbers, or five major branches, including Kutama, Masmuda, um, Sanhaja, Zanata, and some say Hawara. Uh, so, Here we have another group of the Zanata Berbers. However, however, they are closer to the coast in Algeria. Now you say these are Zanata Berbers? Yeah, except, well, these right here are people of Tugart in the Guerrera area. Okay. And they're actually Hawara Berbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, now, would they all still be the same as Sanhaja? Well, they're all considered, like Sanhaja, Masmuda, Kutama, are considered okay. the same, except for the Tuareg. Um, there was a Tuareg influence who became the nobles of these groups. So the original Sanhaja, supposedly, and the Masmuda, or Sanhaja are also called Zanaga, and the Masmuda or Masamida, and the... Um, Kutama or the Hawara were considered, um, you know, settled peoples, the settled Berbers, and they were related to the Garamantes and Gadamas people, uh, people that were more settled, and then the, you know, the nomadic, more nomadic people uh, who who didn't really know much about agriculture. Ancestors of the Torag nobles came in, and they were called Sanhaja as well. Uh, as well as Lamtuna or Aulimadan, as they're known today. Um, and hold on, Aulimadan and Lamta, um, Imusafan or Masufa. And so those people that were veiled Berbers. So it's Good to distinguish between the veiled Berbers, who were mainly nomadic and not familiar with agriculture and that kind of thing, and their vassal castes, which were the original Sanhaja Hawara people, um, the Naga people, and that name also is possibly related to the Zagawa or Zawaga or Iznagin, um, Izgan people. Now these uh, right here are the Tugard people again. Uh, the name Tugard, according to one one writer, I guess you know one of the Orientalist writers said that it was 
It lays to the name of Jagartha, an ancient Numidian king. Uh, so here is a colonialist writer state, stating that the color of Tugurt is black, and they are called Erwaga, which is a plural for a rig. So the Wadi people of the Wadi rig are notably black in colonial sources. Here are the, some of the people. Uh, okay, hold on. You have to go back to my study session. Okay. So I'm not gonna I'm not going to uh, share a screen with you. I'm gonna just read what I wrote because I was just writing down notes about the land of Tugurt or Tugurtia, which was in Numidia. And Numidia was the group of people in Algeria and Tunisia and Western Mauritania that became the Moors or Mori further west. And that is why uh, the Numidians otherwise called Gaetuli by Josephus Gaetuls by Josephus and earlier writers uh, were said to have been the people known as Havila, son of Cush, just as the Mori were from Rama, son of Cush, according to the early Aramaic Targums, or the Hebrew tar Targum. Now, Cush, as I said, was also the name. Cush, Sapta, and all these people occupied North Africa. That is why ancient Saparatha was called Sabatan. And <clears throat> it was also the name of Zawaga, Sabata in Libya was called Zawaga. So it's near the Libyan coast. And Zawaga later became known as the Zagawa or Zagai, Zagai people in medieval times. Um, but uh, so a paper that I found said that the people of Tugurt or the what the Riga people were from the Hawara Berbers. They were from Mazig bin Canaan, or Mazig was the son of Canaan, of course, in in um, all Berber sources or Arabic sources as well. And the Origa, who are also known as Hawara, after their most powerful tribe, played a great part in the conquest of Spain. Uh, and they are still found in Morocco, Algeria, and Tripolitania. They were found in the Zab or Zabia and in Tripoli, in the Mesolata and the Garian, which was an area of a northern Maghreb in Libya and, um, yeah, in, in Libya and uh, Tunisia. Um, so the Mesolata and Garian are two different tribes of the Origa branch. And these people were called actually Mori Numidi because there were other people in Numidia, like, you know, the Romans and people like that. But Mori were, had nothing to do with Romans, had nothing to do with the Lombards or the Vandals who also came into North Africa. Um, so, let's see. I just want to make sure I've gotten everything about Tugurt. So again, uh, Leo Africanus, who was an early Andalusian, um, Andalusian, sometimes called a Moor, but he was basically an Andalusian who wrote about the uh, medieval people of Numidia. Uh, so he mentions Sigil Massa, he mentions Wadan, Ifran, Adra, Figwig in Algeria, Tuat in central Algeria, and Tigararan, and of the Garara. Tugurt, Wagla, Zab, Nafsawa, Misrata, Tawarga, Gadamis, Hazan, Garian, Misalata, Bordoa, Algila, where the Nasimonians were. Uh, but let's go back to the map so we can see where all these places were. Because these were all mostly the Turga, Lamta, Bordoa, Zanata were mostly people of 
well, they were, you know, all, all Berber people, but Zanata and Haja and Hawara, uh, not, not so much Masamuda people. Okay, let's see. Okay. So if you look here, we see, for example, south of the Zab area of Algeria, in the red or pink, you see Algeria. Yeah. And you see then the southern part of Algeria is Zab and the Wadriga. Spelled R W, it's spelled as one word here, but Wadriga or Wadrig is what is meant. And that is, if you see, there's a word Tugurt south of that. The Tugurt area is right there in the Wadrig. Actually, Tugurt is part of the Wadrig area. So it's the Valley of Riga. Riga. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's GH usually. So the people Hodgkin, Hodgson said was, were called Erwaga, like I said, which is the Arabic plural of Rig. Rig. Um, and then south of that is Gordea. Um, and Wargla. In the, you know, if you look south of Wadria and Tugurt, you'll see the Beni Meza, who may have, may have been the Arab, an Arab people, and you'll see Wargla, which is, an, you know, part of the oasis that was occupied by the Zanata Berbers. And far to the south, or, or in the Saharan area, you see the Tuareg, and you see uh, Tuat, the central Algerian area of Tuat, which were the rest of the, was where the rest of the uh, Zanata were located. Now, like I say, um, this area is, if you go, hold on, westward, you'll see Walata, Walata, mm -hmm. which is an area of Ghana, and then uh, the Dara region, and uh, but Sijomasa was also in this area. See Sijil Masa here on the on the left. It's on the same latitude as Wargla. And was occupied by the same Beni Ifren people and others and Ada Berbers. Sijil Masa and Fez were occupied by the Nada Berbers, as well as this whole area of uh, Tua. Now, okay, let me go back to So Wagla was founded according by, to tradition by Solomon, and that's or that's a tradition mentioned by Jean Pomerol in her classic book Among the Women of the Sahara, which was published in 1900. So at the turn of the 19th in the 20th century or late 1800s she lived. She says, legends had it, had it that Wargla was built by King Solomon of Jerusalem, who was master of the winds and clouds. He was a shaman, remember? He was a priest and a shaman. Like all early uh, Aphrodisia priests who can control the wind and the weather and that kind of thing. The, Ka the Kahin or Kohen people. Okay, and she says, and the Queen Makita of Sheba, considered by some to be Candace of Nubia, would often come to visit. Um, now, according to Arab tradition, Bilkis was the Queen of Sheba who, who lived in a southern Yemen or at least one of the queens of Sheba. Um, 
So it's, I think it was um, Idrisi or Al Idrisi who said these Beni Wargla or Gala were one of the tribes of the Zanata, as aforementioned of the posterity of Farin bin Jaina, who have been mentioned already, and their brothers were Yasmartin, Manjasa, Sabartara, and Numalada. Now these Sabartara, Sabaratara, or Sabartara, I mentioned before, were the people of Sabarata, anciently called Sambaratai, or Sabarits by Strabo. And the interesting thing is all these people, the Sabarata, uh, which is also called, Sabarata was in the north of Libya, like I said, along the coast. It was kind of a colony of Carthage, um, like the Zawaga, or excuse me, Zugitania, which was also named for the Zawaga, or the Gawa, also called Zugis. Um, all these Zawaga people, or the Gawa people, are later on called Judeans, or Jews. So all the descendants of the Jene Genewa are called Jews. So here, I wrote, um, this is the reason why the Sony Smiths who claim they got their tradition of metalworking from the Jews of Wargla. They're called Inaden, Inaden among the Tuareg. So those are the lower caste or vassal caste Tuareg as opposed to the noble Tuareg. And they, like the Tuareg, claim descent from uh, people like the Bani Ephraim or Ephraimites. And that's why you find the Jewish, like people among the Igbo and other Africans claiming to be Ephraimite Jews. The Jewish people among the Igbo or Igbo. Uh, so these Jews of Wargla in their traditions, according to Alan Godby in his book, Lost Tribes and Myth, were in the uh, Wargla region and the Mazab region in the oasis, Wagla oasis of Algeria, 350 miles from the Mediterranean, were black as Negroes. So that, I think, first comes from the book from Babylon to Timbuktu. Okay, I will share this part. Alan Godby, in his book, Lost Tribes of Myth, spoke of the Jews of Wargla and the Mazab. And if you look on the map, you'll see the Wargla right south of the Mazab, the Zab area. Uh, they come from the same place, from the Zanata Berbers, or Berry Berry. Descendants of Jaina or Jainawa. So both the Tuareg and the Jainawa claim, or Gnawa, as they're called today, claim descent from uh, this Jaina, who was of the tribe of Ephraim, and, and also, by tradition, was a grandson of Goliath. Um, so it's important to note that the large tribe of the Zanata Berbers were the, the Gawa or Zawaga. Another people were the Garawa or Wangara, who are Sunik speaking people. Originally, Nilo Saharan, like the Zawaga or, Zag or like the Zagawa. So, somewhere along the way, these people from the Aswanek or Aswan area of the Nile, who are called Sambaratai, Sambrits, and later on called Sabari. Sub, Sabarat, Sabarata, um, came to adopt Islam, but were originally Jewish. And, and some people thought they were Aramean Jews because they found those texts among them. 
So you heard it from me first, how the Jews spread to West Africa. Just in case you try, you know, people start trying to uh, <laughs> talk about that later. Mm -hmm. So remember, J the Janoa are called Berbers. They're called Berbers and Bar El Barabir or Bambara and Bambara. The word Bambara or Bambara comes from this word Barbaris, Mori Barbaris. Okay, so these are the people that live between Morgla and Ghana in Mauritania. The Janawa or Ganawa. Later on, after the Tuareg start, started to conquer their lands, and some of them were made slaves, uh, you, you find them further south, and the tribes of Janawa include the Barbari, Barbaris or Barbara, and the Amaima or Lam Lam. Amima and Lam Lam, those are just actually two words of writing the same name. Same two, two ways of writing the same name. And they both mean dove, the dove, even in Arabia or Semitic languages. And then among the Lemba, I think too, the word Lem means the dove. So the boundary of the Janewa on the east was the land of Waraklan or Wargla, as far as the end of the land of the Amorites. <clears throat> that was according to Al Zuri. I think he lived in the 11th century. Al Yakut says of them, calls them Kinawa, and says that they were a tribe of the Berbers, and that the land was named for them. That's the word of the Janawa or Guinea. Okay, those are the people that founded Ghana, which the word Ghana is not related, but the word Jene or Jene is supposed to be related. Jene, the, um, one of the capitals or early towns of Ghana. Okay, so, and if you go to the um, area of the Tuat Oases, here again, the Tuat Central Algerian region, a lot of these places were occupied by uh, Jewish people or Jews, including Timamu in the Adrar area. Wait, where is Adrar? Adrar, I think, was in Tuat. Hold on a second. Just make sure. Yeah. Um, Pemintit and Adrar and in the Tuat oases. Okay, those were the areas of many Jewish people, the Black Jews of the Sahara, who were related to the Black Jews of the Sudan. After the 11th century, when um, after the Amoravi dynasty of the Tuareg or Veiled People, because the Amoravids were known to be ruled by, you know, the dynasty was considered the Veiled Dynasty of the Veiled People or Philistines, otherwise known as the Tamashek, Amashek, or Tuareg. But after that period, a dynasty called the Zionids ruled. The Zionid included uh, the Tuat, Tementit, and the Dra region, the Wed Dra. In this area, uh, so the Zionids ruled around the 12th century. That was the Berber dynasty. And um, they were almost all Zenata of Zenata stock. That was like one of the last uh, Berber dynasties of the, you know, the great Muslim period. 
period of Islam. So just north of the this area of Tuat was the area of the Gurara or Tigararan and the and um or the people of Timimun. Uh let me see, hold on. And the Tugurt region, who I said were Hawara. So the Zanata are the people that ruled Tlemcen in Algeria. Tlemcen, a very famous uh, Berber region. The Zanata. Now it's important to note that the most, the majority of the Berbers in the 14th century, according to Ibn Khaldun, were Zanata Berbers, the Zanata Berbers. And that is why he says that it is thought by many that the Berbers were, you know, black from the curse of Canaan. He's talking about these Berbers who were the, you know, actually they're the only Berbers that existed at that time besides the Tuareg and the Masmuda. Uh, any questions so far? Not so far. Okay. So if I ask you, Mansa or Mazuk. <laughs> how yeah. how are the people, the Berbers of Wargala related to the founders of Ghana? How, what would you say? Uh, wait a or I could ask. Well, they um. Uh... So there's Soninke, right? Well, ask me that again, please. No, no, you're on the right track. Oh, okay. Well, what's okay. The, a better word? Because that's more, um, that's not as well known as Janewa or Wangara. The okay. Wangara traders were Sonink traders, also called El Barabir. They occupied Gao. Cow mm -hmm. which was an early Mali, um, place in Mali. Uh, they occupied Kanem, uh, which is also called Zagawa. Uh, okay. They were the founders of Ghana, which was a town in Mauritania, later in the course of empire. So all these places were founded by the Janewa, and the Janewa were related to the Sunni people, yes. Now the Janewa in Wagla, however, did not speak the Sonic dialects. So it's important to understand that the Janewa in Wagla, uh, or at least not in the medieval times, they were basically spoke the Zanata dialects. Mm -hmm. And that was the dialect of the people that controlled the uh, these areas, which were the Tuareg, which were the, the second generation of Berbers. So it's important to note that, you know, the Tuareg dialects had a great influence or impact on, um, you know, the Sahara and on the North Africans in general, especially modern North Africans who have adopted the name Amazigh from the Tuareg. Anybody who tells you that the name Amazigh was used for all of North Africa is lying. Okay. It referred to one branch of the Berbers who happened to be the camel riding people known as the Tuareg. And they had the uh, Tifana dialect. Tifanag, yes. Tifanag. And the uh, uh, Zagawa and, and the others that made up Soniki, they picked up the Mande. Yes. Dialect. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Now, the um, the Gawa speak, um, I think, both the Afro-Asiatic dialects and the Nilo-Saharan dialect. The question for scholars has been, how is the Nilo-Saharan dialect related? You know, which dialect is it related to? Yeah. Um, or, you know, was it, well, they know the Nilo-Saharan dialects actually extend from way, way back, but 
those of the Sonink, the dogs of the Sonink that were adopted, um, or that were, I'm sorry, that were spoken. The Sonink actually adopted the Mand or Malink dialects, which were Niger Congo, Niger Congo dialects. So the Jahank dialect, Sonink, and a lot of these dialects were actually originally spoken by Nala Saharan speakers. And they're the ones that wrote in their Tariq uh, Sudan or Tariq Afrikach in their languages, not in Arabic, or actually not in, um, yeah, not in Arabic, but in the Jahank, I think, Jahank um, branch of Sonink. Uh, they wrote about coming. Their lead is originally coming from Warda, excuse me, Wargla. Hmm. Wargla, and, but in ancient times. And then also being descendants of Tiras and Harun, or Aaron, descendants of the Yemen. The kings of the Yemen, of course, who are Harun or Aaron and Jethro. So they're claiming to be the Levitic peoples. These people who have connection to the Sabarata in the north are claiming to be the Levitic people. Okay, so, and we said this Sabarata, who are people in Wargla, who are people of the coastal North Africa, had connection to the Sambaratai of uh, the Nile area, especially the area of Philae and the Aswan, Aswan area. And they were, so people have been trying to figure out, you know, what happened to them. That's what happened to them. They were connected to the people of Wagla, the people of the Zagawa, or the guy who claimed to be Jews. Let me go back. And interestingly enough, as I said, the word Zagai or Sakai appears to have been related to not only Zugis and Zugatania in which were districts in of the Carthaginian region, Carthage, you know, districts of Carthage or south of Carthage. Later on, of course, the Portuguese said that these Azuaga people um, were actually originally the founders of Carthage. Um, who were called Moors, or Mora Forus. The Mora Forus or Mori is related, very likely related to um, the word Mars, as well as to Ari, because they're in the book called um, by Nonus, an uh, ancient Greek called uh, Byzantine Greek or Byzantine Roman. Nonus, um, what's his what's his book name? Hold on. Um, yeah, Dionysiaca. Dionysiaca. He writes of um, the Moors being sons of Ares. Or, yeah, the, the sons of Ares. And of course, like I said, the, the um, Targum, Jonathan, mentions that they were children of Rama. So Josephus says, that the Gaetuls or Numidian people were, who were the largest people in the uh, largest of the Libyan tribe, largest of the North, North African people in his time. That's the first century, circa first century AD. He said that they were from Havila of Kush. So Havila and, and Rama and all these people settled in North Africa and along the Nile. The Astaborans of the Blue Nile were considered Sapteca or Sapta. Sapteca actually was considered the uh, Zok, the, 
what what you would call the Zingani, or like I said, the um, Zanaga people. That's the early name of the Zanaga people, or otherwise called Zagawa. Um. So. It also says the inhabitants of Wargala nowadays are descendants of the Beni Wargala and descendants of the brothers of, of the Banu Yafrin and Magrawa, who were also Zanata Berbers. So, again, the Zanata Berbers include the, the Waga, the Ifrin, um, the Garawa, or Jarawa, otherwise called Wagara or Wangara, who are Sunni people. The Janawa are Sunni people in the in the Sudan, otherwise named Guineans, people of Guinea. They are, are actually the people that founded the Guinea coast or named the Guinea coast. So that's actually the early name for the people that are now known as Negroes. We're not, or, or actually, I should say, 50 years ago or noon, up until that time as Negroes. So, and that is also why the South Carolina law of, uh, what was it called? Law of, do you remember? Where they're called, the Negroes are called the, the ancient Berbers because it was known that the people of Niger or the Negroes and the Beribari or El Barabir were the same people, like the Genewa or people of Guinea. Um, so the Al-Muahid dynasty which took over from the Almoravid um, dynasty, of course, was the Masamuda or Masamida people of northern, the northern plains of Morocco originally, and later on, the Upper Atlas area. The Upper Atlas area was also known to have been inhabited by the Hesperians. So the word mora for us in Hesperian probably is derived because Hes Hesperian means the evening star and Mars was the morning star. Uh, or another name for, wait, let's see. Let's start. Let me not mix up. Um, yeah, it's also considered the evening star, I think. Anyway, so the, the, the name Mora Forest has to do with the forest has to do with star, you know. So, and Rama, son of Kush, is, you know, very likely related to Aries, the Ram, the Ram, um, and even to Rama and Kusha in Hindu epics, Rama and Kusa and Lava. Hold on one second. Um, okay, so. Let me just go back to the, because we want to speak again. I want to speak again about the connection of the Garamantes and the Gadamas people. The Garamantians often are wrongly considered to be the Toreg, and that's only because some people want to say that, okay, so there were Black Berbers and the Garamantes must have been Black Berbers, because Isidorus of Seville claimed that the Garamantes were one of the Ethiopian peoples, along with the Hesperians of the Atlas 
and the, the Indy, which was the name of that, that time of the Abyssinians as well as South Arabians. Not just people from, you know, the far, far part of India. The Garamantes sometimes were called Indy. Um, let's see. Yemen. All right. I think this was, oh, I don't, I don't know where it was, unfortunately. But this is Gadamus in Libya, which was the land of the uh, Gorain as well as Tuareg people. Here again is, you're seeing, um, yeah, a man of Gadamus. Um, and the name, sorry. The name of Gadamus is supposed to be connected to the name Cadmus, Cadmus the Phoenician. So all these people that they're trying claiming, you know, lived in Phoenician territory, were actually some of them were actually those people called the Phoenicians, people from the Eritrean Sea. Uh, so Gadamus was part of Numidia, as was Garamantia in the Fazan for a time. And the people of um, Gadamus oops, hold on, were also called um, Sudania because the people, because of the way they, you know, looked. In later times, they're also called Sudania. Um, Hold on a second. This. Up. Back down. So. Here are some of the people of the Tubu Gorain. Uh, oh, you know what? No. Can't do this one because it's. These are just some of the women of the Tubu, but they're also called Goran. And these Goran or Koran, Koran, were said to have founded um, Garamis, Garamez in the Sahara, and they're connected to the people of Garama or Jerma. Okay, so here we have again the Tubu, they occupy. Chad, Fazan, Sudan, Libya, Niger. And there were, the Torah called them Ahel Gara. They were the settled people as opposed to, uh, you know, the nomadic, more nomadic people portion. So Garamas was a brother of Ogigia, a king in the Aegean. He's also related to the Carians, so the name Carian probably is somehow connected. Uh, the mother of Garamus, also called Amphithemus, was Tritonus, so she's connected to Triton, an area of or a town in Libya. And the, you know, there's people like the Fulani or Wodavi who claim descent from the water nymph, just like the Garamus was a descendant of um, a water nymph named Amphithemus. Amphithemus. Um, yeah, they were, they were not a warlike people, according to Herodotus. But the Tuareg later came in and supposedly something they destroyed actually a lot of the Garamantian civilization. And of course, the Garamantes were recently found to have been basically another connected to the sub Saharan people, except that they also had um, some genes from the, or some connection to the Egyptians of the Roman era. 
So the hollowed stone bowls were reminiscent of those found in the southeastern Sahara, the stone bowls of the Garamanchians. Mm, okay. And it's also interesting that the Garamanchians are said to have traced the troglodytes, Ethiopians, who are also considered by Josephus to have been the people like, uh, you know, from Keturah and Median. Uh, so the troglodyte Ethiopians also extended to the west of the Nile. And they were considered, um, some consider them to be the Teta people who lived in conjunction with the Tubu or Gorain people. Okay. So, and they're also probably the same people as the Temahu, Temahu um, or at least some of the Temuhu mentioned in uh, Egyptian sources. So the Garawa were, or Jarawa, or Jawara, were Jewish by tradition, and their queen Kahina um, was said to have been Jewish. And the Garawa, like I said, are connected to these people, the Ahel Gara, and uh, you know these agricultural people that were settled in the Fezzan, in Libya, uh, in Sudan, very early on. Originally, um, the Garamantia was, they were said to have been called Ganfansantis, a gam of Fazan, I guess. And one of the tribes of the, or clans of the Garamantes were the Tita Mansi, which were probably um, Tita peoples. Although some people say that the word is a misspelling of Kidamus or Cadmus again. Gadamus. Okay. Um, so the Garamantes are called by Pliny. Um, and much later, the Syrian Abul Feda in the 14th century refers to Garama and its population as Koran. Okay, there, there we have it. These Koran people or Garan people. Um, are at least in a certain period occupying the land of Jerma or Garama. And they were related, actually, Garamas is sometimes said to be an early Garamanchian town. Garamas, G-H-A-D-A-M-E-S, G-H-A-D-A-M-E-S. Uh, let me just see if I covered everything. Um, so as we see the people of Tugurt and the people of Wadriga People of Wagala are basically described as, you know, black skinned people. And and actually these are the people that a lot of people would like to say that um and the Jews there too as black as Negroes. And that's because they were the indigenous people. Now we know that Jews also came from Spain later on, or Andalusia, and settled in places like the Tuat area. So we also find you know, fair-skinned people there who are mainly of Jewish, who are large, largely of Jewish background. Not necessarily Judean background, but Jewish, European Jews or Spanish Jews, the so-called Sephardic Jews, even though that name actually referred not to, you know, European Jews at all originally. 
And that's a whole nother story I'll talk about later. But let's see. Um, so the gay tools I talked about were the largest of the North African tribes, according to Eustathius and Strabo. They were divided into the Mesesios and Masils, and then the Mori also, you know, came about from them, or they spread out from the, the Mori. So there were clans, related clans of people, just like, um, you know, there were people of Kush, Rama, and Havila, according to the ancient. That is why you find the Masili also in the area of Aden. Um, so Joseph said that the Getuli were Eveloi, or Havila, son of Kush. That, those were the people that founded Zuwila or Zela in Somalia, as well as Zela in Fazan. Uh, the second son is Havila, who, as jo Josephus says, the second son of Cush, who, as Josephus says, was the father of the Avilians, now called Getuli. But the posterity of Havila seemed to be the same whom Strabo called Tawalatians, and whom he speaks of along with the Nabatians and Agrians, a people of near Arabia's Felix. Okay, so the Kaolan people, or Huela, they're called Kaolan in um, southern Arabia. It was an area of southern Arabia founded by the Kuda people. So there were ancient Kuda's father was Ma'ad, who became known as uh, the ancestors of the Madinoi, otherwise called Madiani, and that's where the name Medianite comes from. So it's these Medianite people who came across 10, 15, 19 miles across the Red Sea into Africa, where they were, you know, a lot of them were already there on the other side of the Red Sea. Because the people who speak, speak Sahedic dialects, who were descendants of the, you know, early Sabians in Arabia, Canaanites in Arabia, Menaean people claim to have come remotely from Africa. And that is why they look like Africans. Uh, according to Pliny, there were also uh, an, there was an Ethiopian harbor of the Mosulites, Mosulites in Somalia, now called Ras Antara. And these people who were Numidians or Mauritani Numidi, the Musulami or Mussolini or Masili, came to occupy the Algerid region of Algeria, the Shats region, Shats Algerid region in Algeria, which is also on the map. You know, these, and they're all related people of the. Um, Related to the other people like the Hawara or the what people of the Wadriga and the people of the Tuat, the people of Wadla. All right, and here we go just to show you that the Hesperi, according to Pliny's natural history, he talks about. Um, Beyond the people called Artabites were the Hesperi and Perosi, who, as we said before, were planted in the confines of Mauritania. So the Hesperi, Hesperians, and the Perosi, otherwise called Faurusi, were a people who inhabited Mauritania. And they were also next to the people called Canari. Who may in fact be the same people as you know, or the name may be connected to that of the Kanuri. It's the Kanuri who um again they were considered Jewish, uh, and were supposed to be descendants of the Zagawa people, connected to the Zagawa people that founded Kanem and later on Bornu. The word Bornu means place of the Berbers, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. 
So again, people in the West, including Africanists, were trying to say that these people were, you know, separate. There's a, there wasn't really a, diff, a separation between North Africa and the Sudan in the time of, you know, the 12th, 11th centuries. Those were either uh, considered Janawa or Tuareg, meaning the veiled people. Both of those people were called Berbers or Beri Beri. Uh, in the case of the Zagawa or Zawaga, it's Beri Beri uh, or Barbaris, Babers or Mori, Babers, Babari. And, um, you know, somehow these names, because later on the, the Arabs came in, meaning that we're talking about the Black Arabs now, we're not talking about later Syrian peoples, but the peoples of Sulaim and Hillel, Hawazim bin Mansur, who were black as lava according to the ninth century writers, came in and colonized parts of North Africa and pushed people at like even the Toreg southward. But the Toreg, you know, were occupied an area called Targa and Libya, and that's where their name come, comes from, as well as Misurata. The name Misurata in the coastal area of Libya refers to the early Tuareg tribe connected to the Lu Luata, Mazata, and Nahawara, or Hagar, Tuareg. That's why Ibn Khaldun says the nobles of the Hawara, or Hagar, were the veiled people, the veiled Berbers, and they were the ones called Amoravids. And when they're talking about, they went into, uh, a lot of times when, when the early Arabic writers are talking about the Sudan, they're not talking about, they're talking about the early Berber, the early black Berbers that were vassals of the uh, Tuareg. Because Sudan was son of Canaan, uh, and the Tuareg were often called Amalekites and Philistines, and were, of course, descendants of the Adites, and sometimes said to be, you know, sons of um, children of Aram, related to Shem and Mashek. Let me see if I wrote anything about that here. So, usually when you find um, the Torah spoken of, their ancestors are often said to be, you know, related to the Amalek. Um, uh, Amalek, Aram, and Mashek, Thamud, and Ad in Arabic uh, sources, as well as Time Allah, which was, or Time Allah was actually originally Time Alat who was a deity of the Khazraj and Azd people. And as I was saying before, the early Azd people are the early rulers in, in this Sabian and, um, well, that area of the Sabian Menean people, who are although otherwise known as the Banu Ak from Og, and the Umayma or Amim, and Rephaim and all those Giants. Um, so that's why the Dawasir or Dosar are called uh, the Azd Sanua, the black giants of Central Arabia, or the, right, these very tall people of Central Arabia and among the Ansar all came from the Azd Sanua. Um, and the, well, all the Azd tribes are supposed to be related, there were three major Azd groups. But um, there, the Khazraj and Aus groups are often said to be, you know, descended from giants and, and related to Nimrod, who was a uh, son of 
Urfa Kazdim, and it once ruled, you know, Babylon and actually as Nabataeans. So they're connected to Nabataeans, to Canaan, and that's a, that's still a name of the Dawasir tribe. Canaan, Q-A-I-N-A-N, or C-A-I-N-A-N. So Canaan, Nadir, and Mukaram, Mukaram are mentioned as the ancestors of the prophet and as well as of, of Canana. And that's why, or Canana, that word Canaan of the Dawasir is actually related to Canana of um, further west in the Hejaz and in uh, Tehama, or Tehama is south of Hejaz. Southward of uh, Mecca. And their plain was called the Plain of Canana. Okay, so look, the whole area of Western Arabia was occupied by these people. And of course, being 15 miles away, both sides of, Ara of the Red Sea were occupied by the same people. They were connected not just through Sinai, but like I say, the, the bottom of the Yemen was only, you know, less than 20 miles, less than 19 miles away from Africa. And both sides of those, of the Eritrean Sea was occupied by the same people. Even in before, you know, thousands of years before, we had the so-called Afro Tehama culture that was connecting these areas. However, it's apparent that um, the Israel Canaanite people were not, you know, on the continent of Africa at the time of Joshua and all that, but they had come across, back across from Arabia due to Ethiopic wars, so called Ethiopic wars. Um, okay, so, okay, this will be the last part, because it's, uh, well, not that late, it's only an hour and a quarter, but, um, I'm just going to go over again, that these Sambaritai people, otherwise known as Sabrits, Sambri, Jambaras, uh, these so-called ancient Jews, of Senar in Nubia, in the area of Tanahasi, in the area of not far from uh, the elephant, well, in the area of Elephantine and Aswan. All these people, and Sain. In Sain, a number of tombs of Semitic peoples have been excavated. That's the word they use, Semitic, for the Jews, under the Achaemenids. A Jewish military colony was established in the city of Elephantine with a temple to Yahoo, meaning Yahweh. According to certain inscriptions, the temple of Yahoo predated the conquest by Cambyses in 525 BCE and was destroyed around 410. So completely that archaeological excavation has so far brought no trace to light. The origin of this Jewish colony is problematic. Though it is now generally, generally accepted that it was part of the large-scale immigration into Egypt that began under the 26th dynasty. <clears throat> Though it's just speculation of when they came, the Sambaratai, who I said originally were, um, let me just share, were the same people as called um, Sanbar by Tabari, a group of the Hameda, otherwise known as Hamathites in the Bible. So because the Hamathites originally were that group from which came the Kenites, or worshipers of Yahweh. Sanbar is also called Eshban, and that's where you get the name of, you know, because these Eshban 
or Basman, also entered Spain. That's where the name Esban originates. Esban, of course, was a Hori. Um, the son of Hamdan. Uh, let's see. Who is, okay, it says son of Hameda, who was Hamdan, who is son of Bashman, and this is yet a uh, Tabari writing, a Tabari, Tabari, who is Yasbin, son of Batran, son of Batram, son of Bahran, son of Yahan. So those, like I said, it has the the prefix of Ba, which is, you know, the African prefix. Eshban becomes Bashman, Bashmani, or Yashvin, son of Bathran or Ithran, who is Bathram, son of Bahran or Aran, son of Yalhan or Bilhan. So all these are like the Horite peoples in the Bible who descend from Rawa or Ru, son of Dishan, Dishan, uh, son of Asir or Riza, the biblical Azir. Ezer. So the sons of Ezer are Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. He's also called Kanar. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Some of these names are very, very old. The name Kanari, uh, as far as I'm concerned, probably is connected to that of the Canary the, and the founders of, um, you know, the people that went into the Canary Islands. Uh, so, Actually, I have I need to look up the the, the breeds of Strabo, see exactly where they were. But um, in the time of Strabo, the dominant caste in much of the eastern Sudan was Sambrutai. The Sambrutai, okay, a name which reappears in the fifth century A.D. So, and these are the Sambar of the Tab of Tabari which is a metathesis of Beshmani or Eshban, Yasbin, and the name Asbin or Yasbin in Niger also derives from this. Just as the word Agadiz or Akkad, Agad is the root of the word Cadiz. Uh, so these were Wangara or Wakar um, who are Sonink or Aswanek coming from Aswan in ancient times are also are the ones that brought in the the legend of having been the, the ancient magicians of the pharaohs meaning of the Amalekite rulers, the pharaohan Farim was the name of the Ephraimites. The word Pharaoh is plural for that. It's connected to the name of the people that actually came into Egypt, not, you know, the, the Egyptians themselves or the people of Kemet never used the word Pharaoh. But that's what's very interesting is that you never hear that mentioned by uh, so called Africanists. Or Afrocentrics. The one, the country of the Wankara, or Wangara, Sonic, is the country of gold on the eastern side of the land of Ghana. Tiraka is one of the towns of Wankara. And I'm not sure if this Tiraka was, I forget what the name it is now. I forget the name of it now, Tiraka. In the land of Wankara, there are flourishing towns and famous strongholds. Its inhabitants are rich, for they possess gold in abundance, and many good things are imported to them from the outermost parts of the earth. So this was, who was saying this? Aladrisi again. He lives around 11th century. 
Okay, so we see the Lam Lam were invaded by the people of Barisa, Sila, and Ghana. That's referring to the Torig by this time who conquered the Lam Lam. Uh, conquered the uh, Sonning people that were Jews, and otherwise called Gnawa or Dingnawa. They bring them to their own countries and sell them to the visiting merchants. The latter export them to all the countries. In the whole land of Lam Lam, there are only two small vill villages, Malau or Mali and Del. So the Idris is writing before even Mali was really a large, you know, town and empire. Between these two towns is a distance of about four days. Their inhabitants, according to the reports of the people of that part of the world, are Jews. But infidelity and ignorance overcame them. The country of Lam Lam adjoins in the east the land of Wangara, who were Muslims by that time. In the north, the land of Ghana, and in the south, the uninhabited lands. Okay. Um, so I did want to find where it talked about the Lam Lam and the, um, Amima as being Janawa and reading the Torah. Torah. Okay, among the towns and important cities on the land of the Gawa are Sakwa and Shema. In that land live nomads called the Sadrata. So these are the Sadrata Berbers. They have adopted themselves so much to the conditions of the people of the Zagawa that they be have become part of their race. Uh, the Gulf of Sidra was named after these people, which is possibly a the Tuareg people. The land of the Zagawa adjoins the land of Fazan, where are the towns of Jerema, or Garama and Tasawa. Nearby, which is also called the Little Germa. Okay, so this place was occupied both by the um, the Garan people as well as the Tuareg people. The Asgar were Tuareg, who were the greatest experts in the script, which is attributed to the prophet Daniel. They also used the script symbols to find stolen goods and articles. Now, the script, of course, is the Tifanag. Um, and Yakut wrote of the inhabitants of the town of Gadamis, saying that they were Berbers called Tanawuria. Um, and that's a Tanuri. Tanuri is also a place further south in Sudan. Hold on. <sighs> Fazan was a vast province between Fayum in Egypt and Tripoli. It is said that it was named Fazan bin Ham bin Noah, peace upon him. It's a town, its town is Zawilat al Sudan, where the most the majority of the people are black in color. Okay, so Fazan and Garmantia, Ganimus, all, all called. They're Berbers, but they're also Black or Sudanese. Kokdem was where the veiled people of the West ruled before Abdul Mumin of the Amuahid, meaning the Amuahid, Masmuda people dynasty took over. The veiled men were men of the tents and desert dwellers. They made the Lamti shields and lances. Their tribes are Lamtuna, Masufa, and Gudala. That's where the name Awalamadan of the modern Torah comes from, and Imusafin and Ijadalan, or Igadalan comes from. And one of the basketball players uh, that I mentioned um, has that name today. And one of the African American, he's from Africa, he has that name, Igadalan or something. Igadalan, Igadalan. Ugadula or something? I, I forget. but. Pot, you know, very likely due to the, you know, the height of the these people, the veiled Berbers or Tuareg. And Kanem was called Zagawa. 
it was, quote, part of the land of the Berbers in the farthest west of the Sudan. The Ganawa or Kanawa was the name of a tribe of the Berbers in the west towards the land of the Sudan, contiguous with the land of Ghana. The land was named after them. Okay, that's Yakut al Hamawi. I think he was 12th, 13th century, it says. He was from Asia Minor. So all these people that are writing are not Africans, and most of them are not even Arab by Arabian by blood. You know, they're not part of the original Arab, genuine Arab people, but they're people that were um, of Arabized people. And Ibn Said said the Bagama were black Berbers of the same sort as the Kau Kau. Kau Kau or Gao in Mali was ruled by the Songhai and before by the Sonic people. According to what the merchants relate, the people of the country of Kamneria claim that they are Jews. One of the towns was named Nagira. Now, as I mentioned, Ibn Nagira was a famous North African Jew. That's where he gets his name from. The, his, probably from, he was Kanuri, probably. Unfortunately, a lot of people just assume that the Jews in North Africa were originally you know, European looking or something, but no. nope, they were from the original Jews that settled in Africa before they had contact with Europeans or Eurasian people in the Middle East. So Ibn Abizar also wrote of the Wagara, Wagara, saying they are tribes of the Sudan. They professed Judaism. This Tata Kalisinus was the Takuri. I think. Uh, Takalisin. Uh, so again and again, we're told that the Sonic, the Zagawa tribes, the Jinawa tribes, are all connected people that were Jews. And the Wagla Jinawa brethren of Geneva are called Sabarat, who I said have connection to the Sambaratai of the ancient Nile. So they were, although they were Islamicized, some of them were Islamicized, they were originally um, apparently Jews. I don't know, I mean, I could probably try to find out when exactly they came in, but it was certainly many centuries B.C. Uh, and possibly related to the presence of this two um, Shasu people, too, that settled there. But I'll have to find out, because obviously no one else is going to do it. Looks like, I mean, I don't know why I have to be the only one bringing out this information, or putting together, I should say, a lot of this information, which was already brought out by a lot of other people. A lot of other scholars, but two and two were not put together, and that's all. Okay, so let's see. Where's my, where's my map? Did I move the map? Okay, oh. Hold on. Um, oh. So again, a lot of this area north of, in fact, or actually in the same latitude of southern Morocco was occupied by peoples that were descended from the original Berbers called Zanada and Hawara. They used to occupy the coast like Carthage, Sabrata or Sabatan. That was the other name of Sabrata was Sabatan, a uh, colony of Carthage, as well as the early, it's also called Zawaga, which I said, again, it was the name of the Zagawa people. So here we have the Wadrig, and north of it 
in uh, the pink part of Algeria is Zab. All that area was occupied by the same people, right directly to the south, Tugurt, Gordea Wargla, Wargla south of Benin Meza. Okay, so all this is like really actually not even, it's, it's more um, northern Algeria rather than central Algeria where the Kuat oases are. And the Tuat oases in central Algeria are where more of the Zanata Berbers have found. So Zanata occupied once Sijamasa. The Jews of Sijamasa were these black Berber people. And the nobles were the Tuareg people who were at that time, the Tuareg, um, you know, they had already been taking slaves, concubine slaves from the Europeans. So they were probably already brown skin rather than black. Brown as opposed to black. And this brown was called Abiyad by the later medieval Arab people. Abiyad or Biad, meaning somebody with a clear, uh, skin of black buckwheat, not red, red or European looking or fair skin, not at all. So the Masmudi used to occupy the coast of Morocco on uh, the plains of Morocco, uh, later taken over by the Zanata. Zanata. Um, and the Zanata are the people that had their hair cut like a, a mane, like, you know, Mr. T, or <laughs> that's that's where that came from, the Zanata Berbers. That was the original hairstyle, or one of their totemic hairstyles. And the Mount Atlas, here we have Mount Atlas here, running into, towards Algeria, into Algeria. Um... Okay, I guess that should be enough for today. Well, I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of, um, you know, these Libyan places that were once called Carthage. I guess I should have a map. Go. I should have gone back with a map of Carthage. Uh. Carthage and uh, Zugatania. Those are places in um, Tunisia, next to Algeria. Any questions? Let me turn on the light here. It's all dark. Oh, not dark out. Oh, any questions, Marzouk? Manza, not Manza. Or Marzouk, actually. Sorry. Any questions to help us? So you have actually many of the several of the books that I think um, that I've talked about that people should get if they want to read about all of it. Um, one was the uh, sources of Arabic. What was it? So one of it was the works of Al Wadi. Al Wadi Al Yakubi. So Yakubi's works, which is here in three volumes. And this is actually a lifetime. If you know who the people are, it's like a lifetime of pleasure reading about the history, you know, these people. And basically they're talking about what? Our ancestors. Regardless of what people are trying to say. Um, and then, oh, 
Oh. Well, I have this book, which is extremely important. It was, it, it was extremely important in me, in me figuring out who the people of Israel were and where they came from, the people of Moab, people of Canaan, where they came from. And he actually puts their South Arabian names. He writes, you know, and a lot of people don't know who the South Arabians were. I just happen to have known because I studied a lot of, read a lot about the Musnad inscriptions and um, a lot of genealogy, you know, of the Arabs. So I knew that a lot of these people were actually, a lot of the names of Tabari names, who he lines up with the uh, Genesis, were actually South Arabian peoples. And I had known that, for example, the Kara, uh, the, the tribe of Kara spoke, still speaks um, the Musnad, or excuse me, Sahidic dialects are connected to the Sabian and Himyaritic. That the Kara and the Mara are closely related, or consider themselves closely related, and that they were descendants of Kuda and related to Kanana, tribe of Kanana, and um, hold on one second. Just want to see who is. Uh, you know, and that the Kuda were ancestors of the the Bali tribes who occupied, who were connected to the Balkane or Kenites, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure why my tenant keeps opening and closing the door. I gotta see what that's about, but. Uh, all right, so if no questions, absolutely no questions. Um, I'm not sure people can get this on Amazon, but the history of uh, somebody, somebody who was a Persian or an Iranian who wrote, I guess, in the 10th century about Muhammad's lineage. So all those people were considered, people of Genesis were considered Muhammad's lineage. I'm now working on an um, article about the Quraysh as Levite, Levitic peoples. It should be interesting for many people. All right, um, Marzouk, I guess we can say goodbye then. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess I'll wait for your next class and uh, I will have studied this material here. Okay. And so I can keep up with you. I, I love your, your teaching. I love the research. And uh, I'm going to stick with it. Okay. Yeah. I hope so, so. And I'll look for that book too. Oh, what, the Tabari book? Yes. Yeah. That's it. Okay, that one is available right now, isn't it? I think it's probably um, as a used book. I'm not if sure. not, I'll find it. Yeah. I'll find this it. One, this one is by Watton McDonald, translated by Watton McDonald. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you teaching me oh. and teaching this information. All right, so I'll see you on Facebook. Okay, yes. okay, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.